Right, this is part, in fact, part three. We can see that uh, on this machine that we are using, it splits it up into 20 minute bits. All right, sorry about that, I'm not used to technology. Now then, let's continue on. Waiting is completely not me. Right, okay. So you wouldn't use no. those, those, type, those type of words. So can you, remember, can you recall any, any kind of incident at all with a, a female no. person? That's what? bloat. I know who she is. Yeah. Can you recall that specific incident there? That's what I'm trying to kind of pin you down to. No, because I didn't say anything like that. Right. Okay. I, I would not start chatting with somebody. I would never do that. End okay. of. Right. So if they sort of started chatting at you first, how, how would you react? Well, I would get fairly upset and everything because I don't go out in the garden very much. Mm -hmm. And I do admit that I have swore at them. Um, you know, twice yeah. I think it was, okay. and that's it. Just to get away from them and get in, because I wouldn't go into a slag and match. No way would I go into that more defensively. I've never attacked. I've always defended over everything right. in my life. Okay, thanks for that. Um, okay, a few days on on the tenth of May, two thousand and fifteen. Tenth <laughs> yeah. of May, two thousand and fifteen, at approximately one a.m. A male residents were sitting in the communal garden having a cigarette. So this is one o'clock in the morning, that would be early hours of, of Saturday. Uh, whilst sitting out, they were approached by who they believed to be your daughter, Kaylee. She engaged in conversation with the male and told him um, if Andrea antagonises her mother anymore, uh, she would quote, she would smash her fucking face in. Well, I can't comment on that, but I do remember the incident. Yeah. Um, Kaylee was in the garden with the dog and he came down and they did speak, but I can't say what was, I can't speak for her. Right, okay, so you're aware of, yeah. of that instance. Okay, did you ask Kelly to go down and speak to, speak to the no. man? Right, okay. So Kelly done that on, mm. on her own free will? Yeah. Okay, because what I'm told is that the male was, was already in, in the garden no, and, and Kelly no. came and approached him. No, he came down when Kelly was in the garden. Okay. Did Kaylee speak to you about the conversation that she had with that male when she came back up to the flat? No. No, no she didn't have to come up to the flat. My flat is in the garden. Right, okay. So she was in the garden. Right, so how are you, how are you aware then of that conversation between... Because I've seen him come and down and Kaylee talking to him and I was in his rack. Right, okay. Did you hear raised voices during that conversation? No, no, no. Right. Okay. On 3rd of June 2015, we're up to June now, so we haven't got too long to go. Uh, at approximately 10 past 7 in the morning, a neighbouring resident complained that whilst you were in a communal garden, um, you saw a neighbouring resident looking out of their flat, flat window. You, Marion, were then seen um, making a finger gesture up towards their window and then shouting, um, fuck off, I'm going to kill you, whilst crossing your fingers under, under your neck and thinking the better it would take from underneath your neck with your finger, kind of that way as if, you know, they're going to and do some here is serious harm. So that was on the 3rd of June at 10 past 7 in the morning. Yes, I, I recall that very, very well. Yeah. I just go out and I sat down and the next thing, a barrage of abuse comes to me again from this woman. That's when she threatened me. Which, which, which uh, woman so is this? The, right. the, the one on the end who mm -hmm. said a lot of the things. She came out again and gave me a barrage of abuse. I was carrying on with married men. Um, that the neighbours were going to have me evicted for all the noise. I did shout back if, if they have me evicted because of all the noise. Um, it's because of you, because they're always outside mine. Mm -hmm. um, she told me that she would be get, you know, she knew a lot of people. She told me that every time that I go out in the garden with the dog, she'd be out. Yeah. Oh, and Andrea, three flights up, yeah. was looking out and, you know, they were sort of all open. So there's no way I could have attacked her and there's no way she could have heard any because she's three big stories up. But well, if you shouted, you'd be able to hear something. Well, I was arguing with the teeth. Right, you okay. And what have you got the finger gesture? You said that you made a finger gesture towards her. Obviously, you'd see that, wouldn't you, if you were three floors up looking down? Well, I can't recall that. I can't. What, what kind of finger gesture? Well, that would suggest is either two fingers or one finger or Well, possibly, else. but I mean, I can't recall because I was all uptight the fact that I only went out for 
a cup of tea with the dog, so, you know, right morning, I'm up mm. at half five most mornings, right. and I can't go out in the garden. So again, I went in and called the police. I was very upset with it. That, okay. uh, that was locked as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So when you said possibly with regards to the finger gesture, you think it's something that you, that you, that you might have done or just can't remember whether you, you would have not? It's very expressive with mm. the hands, Maria. Yeah. So whether that's been mis yeah. misinterpreted. Okay. So there was an incident that moment, um, but not as... Yeah, no. as you know, I, call the police. I, oh, I call the police, but they call the police as well this okay. time. It's normally only me. Okay, thank you. Okay, um... Oh, and, and I do remember they accused me of picking on the young girl upstairs. You do know these are all related. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware of, yeah, okay. of who people are living in, in that... Um... Except for one, he's not related. No. Okay, how long have you lived there, Marion? Um, I've been for landlord for seven, seven years, was it? Oh, it's about seven, seven years. Yeah. Like, two and a half now, I've made a huge difference. Right, so you've been seven? Yeah, I've been about, no, as well. No, no, sorry. Seven years in the other place, with the landlords, mm. and I think... So seven months, you've been with Jim? For about 14. Okay. 14 years, mm. I think. Okay. Um, right, on the 6th of June, so sort of the weekend just gone, Apparently there was um, like a, a fire oh. in your <laughs> property. Can I answer my little No, this I've seen. I've seen the gun. You need to speak to my and ask the question. Yes, I think allegations from this end is a bit as a fire. Right. Okay. With well, the fire, fire brigade were called into your property. Brigade were called to my property. Yeah, this on Saturday. I, I would. Yes. Have, I, late, I think it was late. <laughs> late Saturday afternoon. I think it was. Yeah. 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 Was, whenever the fire became caught on that day. Yeah, okay, so what, what happened then? Well, um, I went in, I, um, my daughter's had the dog, I said to mum, and she picked him up from the park, okay? I got him a special piece of meat, mm -hmm. a piece of gammon, yeah. and I was going to have it with him as well. And um, I put the gammon on in a big pan, mm -hmm. and I went down to watch the telly and um, fell asleep. Right, okay. And I blame that for me not getting rest, not being able to get sleep because of all the noise outside, and being on medication as well, because it's reached just a point of, uh, you know, where we need help. Okay, so basically, effectively, you, you were cooking cooking in the kitchen. Uh, boiling. Boiling something in the kitchen. You fell, fell asleep for one, one reason or another, and the, presumably the water evaporated from what you were, yeah. what you bought on them, obviously. Black, thick black smoke was generated from that. No. Right, okay. I mean, that's, it sounds as if it's an accident, you can't be you know, accused of anything wrong there, but I think a little inference was that the fire might have been started deliberately by yourself, and residents had concerns because it's kind of, if you live in, kind of in the same building kind of thing, they felt that they could be potentially at risk. That's all. I can't cope with the sound. Oh, no. Okay, I've just got to put that to you. That's, no, can I just say, if they'd have knocked on the window and woke me up, I could have turned it off, but they chose to ring the fire brigades. Apparently they did knock on your oh, door I quite don't. quite a lot to try to get to get you up. Oh, I According to the reports I've received. Well, I, I can't argue, but oh, I right, mean... Okay. So, the, so basically then, it was, there was, well, it wasn't a fire such that it was something that was boiling and dry, and yeah. they associated the smoke with that. Get they us. said there was flames coming from everywhere. The kitchen was destroyed, mm -hmm. and there's nothing like it's a that. Pan. I've seen yeah, it. Yeah. The landlord came out. The other landlords. Yeah, more like what out on Monday, didn't it? Yeah. And and he said I, he had been told, mm -hmm. um, the kitchen had been destroyed, and there was nothing in the kitchen. There was no sauce, no nothing, um, and the pan is mm -hmm. the handle still on it. Mm -hmm. Everything's still there. Right. Okay. It's in the car. Yeah. If you want to see it. That's okay. No, I'll, I'll take you away for that. That's fine. But no, thanks for uh, clarifying that for me. Okay. Just need to move on to three sort of the big, the biggest sort of emotive issues um, within Shrewsbury. Um, but the first one is um, dog, dog fouling. Okay. There's allegations um, made by residents that yourself, Marion, allow the dog to basically defecate in, in the garden and then you don't clean it up. Um, also allegations that you allow the dog to basically to wait um, and it cocks its leg on the kids kids' toys in, in the garden area. Just two, two examples of updates that residents 
I'd given me. Um, first one, 3rd of June 2015, approximately 10 past 7 in the morning. Resident Witness your Dock, uh, we and all over the children's toys that were in the garden. So that was the same date of the fire? That was the same date as the, where you were just, well, allegedly just okay. taking it up to. Ah, um, uh, right, okay. Up to. Um, yeah, they're trying to justify yeah. this for um, okay. That's what they've said. And they've recorded a further instance uh, on the 21st of March. Um, a resident's daughter, who was aged two, picked up a hula hoop in the garden, which, which is called in dog accident. Um, and the dog accident then obviously went all over the, uh, over the two year old's hands. <clears throat> Can I just say, my dog is never off a lead. Right. He does have a little wee on the uh, lavender plants by me, and I do spray it. Right. Okay. to try and preserve it. He's never dirtied outside there. The girl next door has a daughter that used to come down every day. Her dog used to run round all the time. Yeah. The lad on the end, his dog is running round off lead with the children. Also, they had 13 people outside my home the other week and they had another two dogs with them as well. And my dog is taking out six in the morning or seven. Yeah. Round the block, I might take him out just for a minute mm -hmm. and come in uh, to make my tea and get yep. ready, and then I take him for a walk. He does not dirty in the garden. When he was a tiny puppy, he might have had one or two accidents. I picked it up, but when they started accusing me of the dog dating, I protected the dog by making sure he's on the lead and he comes out with me. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't got a dog, but if it's, if it's water, he's kind of a usual community old garden as his exercise area. I don't see a problem with him. Go to the toilet at the garden as long as it's picked up. It's like your dog does the business on the pavement. As long as you pick it up. Unfortunately, you know, I can't acceptable. take my dog out to exercise because every time I go out, they start shouting and screaming at me. My dog was somewhere the other day and he was shaken because of these people. Right, okay. Um, do your um, grandsons ever look after the dog? Well, I have had my grandson. Okay, do they ever look after the... Oh, God, the twice, spread, uh, when, twice when, he got caught. <laughs> yeah. Once he took him in the garden, and I shouted at him, mm -hmm. I said to him, will you take him out of a nice? Mm -hmm. um, I said, just walk him around the block. And he did. He said he saw that lady. I said, why, where did you go? He said, I only walked around the garden now. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my God. I said, I've told you not to do that. I said, because these people are wasting to just get anything on me, and because you're young, they will say that the dog has dirty. I mm -hmm. said, and the next day I said, did he dirty? He said, no, no. Nah. Right. Because I knew. Okay. So at least, obviously, you know, it sounds like you're a res very responsible I dog, and you know if the dog does, definitely, you wouldn't intentionally, obviously, you know, you don't live actually in, it's not peace and tranquility at the moment in, in Shrewsbury Road, no, so you wouldn't, as long as I'm aware that, that you're satisfied that you wouldn't intentionally no. Not a dog dirty in, in the no. garden to kind of cause all the rest of the Everything these continuing. people have wanted, I was just saying before, wasn't I, Angela? Yeah. I have a day too. They didn't want me in the garden, I left the garden. They started intimidating me in my flask. I left the flask, I came back and put neck curtains up. Then they started saying I was stealing from them and I was robbing from them. Now that's gone and now it's this. Right, okay. So. I don't need to discuss any more about dogs, but you know you've expressed your obviously mm -hmm. concerns, and I'm, I'm satisfied that you know you don't intentionally allow the dog to, to do his business do in the garden. Well, if he did, you'd certainly you'd, you'd pick it up. Um, I can understand the point as well about the dog if it has a weight weight on kids, kid, kids toys. But I'm, yeah. I like to think that you would prevent that from from happening. Of course. You know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the other um, emotive issue within your block is the use of. Um, CCTV cameras. Yeah. A lot of complaints. Um, well, alleging that your cameras, Marion, are deliberately focusing on, on the communal garden and um, particularly when children are playing in there. I know um, Jim, the landlord, uh, wrote letters to all residents yesterday um, saying they just want CCTV at the, at the properties anymore. That's, 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 quite, just, can I, that's quite worrying when, when they're um, saying that the cameras are deliberately focusing on children. And that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's quite a day, especially since I'm a youth leader. Well, I was. It is concerning, but I've also had a letter from um, from the NHS, like one of the residents got a community nurse who, who calls around to the property, and she documented that as a concern as well. Um, I've been sent out quite a lot of photographs from, from residents documenting the cameras. Um, not capturing your property, but, but looking outwards into the communal garden. I don't know whether, 
I don't, I don't, I don't think it's to specifically watch kids in, in, in the garden I, because, but because they are focused on the communal garden area at times. If kids are in there, they, they won't be captured. No. The, the reason I've got those cameras there and the garden is a tiny square bit in the front of a, um, mm -hmm. a window in yeah. the porch. Yeah. And um, I've been broken into through that. Um, I've had um, a board by them put up when I put a plastic camera in there for protection. Mm -hmm. um, the cameras are in the window which are faced that way, so obviously I couldn't face them out because the ledge is only that big. Yeah. One is faced at my door because um, they accused me of stealing, so I had to have proof of what was coming to there. Yeah. The other one is in the laundry room, yeah. facing to this porch, yeah. and that catches the other side of it, and that's how I'll cause a stealing a pole. The other one causes uh, barricading the door um, to stop me going in or out, um, and creating a scene for everyone to come and watch it. And I wouldn't have had that evidence because they've been harassing me for two and a half years and I was always told I needed evidence. Okay. I got the evidence and still nothing has been done about it. Okay. If I take those cameras down, I've got no security. They pass my bedroom window constantly and everyone that comes on the property to go to their next door, they come down my path and along through past my bedroom window and my front door. I'm isolated and on my own. So I've told the landlord I'm more than happy to take them down if he can come up with an alternative security. Right, okay, because I think what's been suggested is that obviously the cameras that you have, you, you move them around quite quite frequently. And it no, can, I leave them. In on nerves, um, residents. I think what Jim, I think quite rightly, has said to in order, because people have been warned about the cameras in the past. Uh, I think sent the same letter as them, um, I think on the 19th of March, and because Complaints continued with regards to the uh, CCTV. I think people thought, well, the easiest thing is just to remove the CCTV. I think, as the, the owner of the property, if someone's going to put CCTV there, it should be um, mm. Jim, the yeah. landlord, because well, it's, it's, it's his property at the end of the day. So, you know, if I was in your position, I would abide by what, what Jim has asked you to do for well, now. And I can have a sort of separate conversation with Jim about putting some additional. CCTV well, property. I would appreciate that, and I would also appreciate you asking him why the, the next door neighbour can have four cameras up, which he's given permission for on every path where children go as well. They've got them on every entrance on their side, but I can't even have it on my front door or my porch where I've been broken into. You might know what the neighbour's name is. So is that number 30, is it? Oh, Maloney, yeah. He's given him permission to have right. these cameras. Okay. Well, I think, you know, I don't know what, what goes on with Jim and his tenants, but I presume Jim has had, he's had no complaints about the use of that gentleman's cameras, whereas with your cameras, it's, it's different. He's had quite a lot of complaints. I mean, um, residents have been in touch with Jim quite a lot, and one of the main issues is uh, the use of CCTV. Um, but that CCTV wouldn't have called those ladies on camera. Stacking the materials up against the front door. Yeah, no. I was looking out into the garden. Okay, with that evidence, then what what did you actually do with it? Did the, police, it? The, the police have seen it. It's been it's been um, it's been looked at by the police, and it was locked as well. The police have seen it right, okay. because it was the police that told these particular people to get it moved right. away from their front door. Well, actually, the police, what, what? the police moved it themselves. The community police they moved it um, when I called them out, and okay. um, and then. Um, First of all, police oh, I don't, I don't, yeah. on that incident, I can't remember. Okay, what does what did Jim's um, latest letter, I think he's was delivered to attendance yesterday, say to you, did you get a letter from Jim about the CCTV? You did say you did. I he's did. And he's, he's rang oh, me today. Oh, I know, he's rang me today. Now then, just as a uh, another point, I just come in. Um, you've heard all the things that have gone on. I've just come into the office and uh, some stuff and I, I just noticed that uh, again this Mike O'Brien is avoiding even the evidence that this old lady has brought. He just said didn't he in the last pig in peace. Well he was told in the last, last piece here by this woman that she'd got her CCTV up. Alright, recording what 
that family had, that had moved in had done and that the police were in attendance. Where is that evidence with this officer of the council and why isn't he saying to this old woman right I'll look into that I should have got that sorry about that why is it always one-sided and he ignores it you see he ignores what she said she's saying there's evidence there's evidence with the police I'm ignoring it that's his attitude I'm ignoring it because it is clear by what is going on here that he has every intention of having this woman confess to something she's not done it's a disgrace what a disgrace let's carry on we're not far to go I believe and said I can't remember what he's going to look at. I think he's basically said he wants to um, he wants to know where you're up to about moving and he's chasing her to move. But we're doing everything within our okay. body. I, 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 I can speak to her after the end. Yeah, sorry, about, 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 okay. I, I, I'll ask you. Yeah. Uh, that one? Okay, I'll bring it. Right, okay. So, yeah, so Jim's asked you to not put any, any cameras there. So my, my advice would be to to take to take them down. I would think Jim needs to put something there yeah. himself. Um, and because I think the cameras, because the residents, they know that they're, they're always going to be looking for with the cameras and maybe well, thinking, thinking incorrectly that they're, they're focused on maybe something that they shouldn't. Sorry if we couldn't across you. But if that's their argument, why are they constantly putting the 